Alright, welcome to the second day of the animal drawing workshop, drawing from life today. Um, this is the stuff where people have a lot more problems um, with drawing from life, and it's really all about capturing poses and then referring back to the animal for reference. Um, you try to capture that pose quickly as possible. Um, and then everyone's always like, well, he's moving, how am I going to get it? And um, the reality is that, uh, uh, you know, you just refer back to them for the shapes. And yet it is difficult, because then you really have to think about it. Well, he was in this pose when I captured the gesture, and now he's in this pose when I'm trying to actually lay in the construction and lay in the more of the organic forms. And it's difficult. It's a little bit of a process. But it, um, you just have to, just kind of, it comes with time, like everything. The more you do it, um, it just comes with time. So you want to observe um, and digest, um, uh, and then actually produce, and then dictate what you actually what you saw. Um, and make sense of it, understand it. It's better when they're, when they're not moving, of course, um, he's not moving right now, but uh, it, it's more fun when he's actually moving around and get that life to it. You know? and, and your poses, the, 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 the believability of your poses come with time, you know, of, really, of, of the gait, of the certain walk, um, of planting the feet and the limbs. Um, you know, why it doesn't look right, why it does. Uh, it just comes with actually more, more practice, okay? The more prolific you can be, the more, more proficient you will be. So I'm going to do another, it might be a little extensive today because we we'll start adding some lights and darks in there and stuff, so be patient. And, um, uh, if you want, you can add, you can shout out questions earlier today, so. Although I don't have eyes in the back of my head, so I can't pick hands, so just shout them out. But, you know. <clears throat> and I'm going to be using Conti um, on the Strathmore. So, I really don't want that pose though. That's the, <laughs> the one time he is standing there. See, for me, it's quite static. It's quite stagnant. Um, you know, there's a lot of twinning, like the legs are all doing the same thing. So it's not as fun for me. Um, and now they're probably gonna start moving around. Um, and sometimes it's okay to blend, to blend, uh, blend, you know, the actual different ones together. If you like to pose the one in the head of another, it's fine. Nobody's gonna know. Super giraffe. Right? Super giraffe. So I'm probably just going to take the back pose on the little guy right now. So just like you started with um, drawing uh, the, the skeletal structure, as I did on a previous chapter, uh, staying very loose once again and getting the gesture. Um, it's more important to be that much quicker, though, because whereas the skeleton's obviously not moving, uh, now we're dealing with a live subject that is moving. Um, the, real trick, the real trick to this is having good observation skills. Uh, really observing the movement um, and watching, uh, trying to capture walk cycles, um, uh, where the, where their actual feet are hitting the ground um, or their toes uh, when dealing with a quadruped. That's a, that's actually uh, a big part of it is to really observe, um, kind of think about it, and then almost take a mental picture, a real quick snapshot, and capture it in as few lines as possible. Um, so after you kind of just lock in those, those few lines uh, to where the limbs are, what's the pose, the spine, um, then you can start going back in and constructing over it. Once you get that pose, obviously the animal will have moved, um, but you're just going to refer back to that animal, as I said previously, um, as you heard me talking about it live here, uh, you're going to refer back to the animal to actually start constructing the shapes over it. You want to stay very objective um, and you don't want to look for too many. Don't don't worry about details at this point. Um, you want to actually be concerned with volume and uh, getting a sense of weight and actually really um, looking for, once again, plane changes. All things that are very similar um, in terms of my approach uh, when dealing with bones or any other type, any other types of studies. W once you actually have gotten the, the general forms in, um, and then you can start actually working on some of the details. Uh, and I, if you see, I keep referring back to the animal. And even I have to catch myself at times. Sometimes I get too caught up in the drawing and I start looking down too much. Um, even though I've been studying for so long, I can always learn something more. So be conscious of uh, keeping referring back to the model, all right? This one being this giraffe. Um, one, uh, one technique I like to use uh, when dealing with quadrupeds is to, to make it feel like it's alive is, uh, and, and moving, giving some life and energy is, is all within the tail. 
Um, you can see back on the lower part of the image I was just dealing with, I kind of pulled the tail off. I use that as a compositional element, um, as you saw, as I did with the American Lion study, skeleton study. Um, so I use it as a sense of composition and also a sense of movement and life. Um, it's something you can bring to your work if you choose or choose not to. Uh, as you begin to lock in the rest of the forms, um, as I'm doing here, um, things that are close to the camera, I'll pump up the detail. Things that are farthest away, um, I'll actually just, just do a flat tone and, and let it kind of recede into the distance. Uh, if you over-render every limb, it just, it just flattens it out. Uh, one, uh, another thing that's very important um, studying animals is uh, putting in the time in the anatomy studies. Um, you know, get yourself some good anatomy books um, and really put in the time on that. Because it's more than just studying from life. You gotta really get into the scientific aspect um, and do some, some serious studying. It'll, it, anatomy is not the end all be all. It's, it shouldn't help you draw your drawings. It should just help you correct your drawings. The same way perspective would help a layout artist. Don't let perspective draw your, your drawings and create them. Just help it from, from uh, helps you from not screwing up. Um, so it's something to take into consideration. Um, as I start to lay in the pattern on most animals, um, first of all, you want to leave the patterning to the end. Zebras, giraffes, tigers, um, but don't arbitrarily uh, place the pattern. Um, you want to be very um, conscious of the volumes. So use the pattern to help describe the form. Okay? So uh, top planes, side planes, under planes, uh, use it as a way to help really show volume. And it's a good little trick to actually um, help describe a direction and form. Anything that helps describe direction is a good thing um, and form. Overlaps, uh, patterning, um, conceptual three-dimensional forms. Um, and then in this case now, lighting. If you're starting to see, I'm starting to knock in some shadows on the, e on the ears, um, the underplane of the jaw, uh, the underplane of the eyeball there to give it some structure and starting to bring out some of the forms and locking in some of the details. I even give it a little bit of personality that's kind of become my forte. And the real trick to that, it's in the eyes. The eyes are the windows to the soul. Um, you can get a lot of <clears throat> expression in the pose. Uh, I always talk about that um, a lot of the personality shown in the pose and the secondary um, aspect to really reinforce uh, who that character is or who that animal is, is in the face. But especially when dealing with um, drawing from life, sometimes it's just a little twinkle in the eye because um, uh, I don't want to push it too far. Um, so it's just that's why I sometimes leave the eyes to the last. Right now I'm starting to uh, use uh, the white Conti, um, and it's, uh, I believe it's a Carbothello pencil, to really <clears throat> bring out uh, some of the hot spots. And I'm not going to hit him in every area, but just the parts that are really like uh, closest to the to the light, and that are facing any plane that's facing up, should be hit with the light. When people are first starting out, like this type of drawing, by by using like on tonal paper, and they start bringing in some lights and, and start playing with light and shadow, um, a lot of people make the mistake of making each light. Um, spot the same intensity. Um, they get carried away with adding lights in every certain area. And the reality is, uh, when you do something like that, it then works against you because um, you're trying to help show form and uh, show a sense of volume, uh, especially with the lighting. And if you if all the lights are the same intensity, it just flattens it out. So just be conscious of that as you start to add lights into your your drawings. Don't don't get don't get carried away. <laughs> 